he used just a single drop and his hands afterwards were rock steady and the dyskinesia left. Mama, who was coming back? It works most of the time. In fact, it's... Uh... <laughs> You know, Lou became a, a big advocate of cannabis and started telling everybody that he, you know, he knew what it, what it could possibly do. You know, during that time, he had a friend in South Dakota, his name is Larry Smith, who was also uh, struggling with Parkinson's and encouraged Larry to come out to California and try cannabis for the first time. So my dad, Lou, got an interest in cannabis because of the disease, because of Parkinson's. He never used marijuana, medical marijuana, recreational or otherwise, but there came a point um, his disease progressed pretty rapidly and dramatically. My dad, when he had Parkinson's, it advanced pretty quickly and at one point he was uh, flat on his back in pain could hardly move and, and we honestly thought he wouldn't make it. Well, there's a long history of research looking at the effects of cannabis in Parkinson's. Cannabis extract um, contains lots of chemicals and most of the sort of directed research is focused on two main components, which is THC and cannabidiol. Cannabis extract, THC and cannabidiol together might be of benefit for sleep or pain. And those are aspects that we're hoping to um, explore more. Hi, Larry, how are you? Come in, come in. Good to see you. How are you feeling? It's been a bit of a rough week. Really? And the best way to take it is put it under your tongue and rub it in your cheek. My name is Betty Smith. And my husband, Larry Smith, my husband of 47 years, had Parkinson's disease. And over the course of his disease, gradually life became harder and harder. And in particular, he began to develop some disturbing symptoms. Larry's at the point where he's having so much trouble walking now. He takes 20 pills a day. And this is the week we've called the physician to increase his cinnamon dose and that will increase his side effects. My uh, symptoms are a too more obvious than they were before. And the pain is a little sharper. I remember Lou coming back the next day just so um, ecstatic about, you know, what had transpired that he had took this, the oil and, uh, you know, his, his dyskinesia stopped. Don't do too much, you're gonna be asleep all, all afternoon. You know what you should do? No, don't try to communicate, just relax. See what happens. We know from animal experiments that the endogenous cannabinoid system is very important in regulating motor activity the very type of activity that is impaired in Parkinson's disease. From animal experiments, we also know that boosting certain branches of the endocannabinoid system is helpful in relieving symptoms of Parkinson's. Finally, from anecdotal information, we know that certain patients who smoke marijuana experience relief of their symptoms. I think you're calmed down. So quickly. Did you guys eat lunch? Are you hungry now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> funny, funny I am. Yeah. Actually, I've, I've, a person I've like me could really use marijuana. It makes, it makes me pretty angry that sure, I can't get it in my home <laughs> state. Sure. 
The number one frustration that I have is knowing that there is this untapped potential that comes from what marijuana is, te is teaching us to generate new medicines and being stuck because of financial issues or political issues, that is extremely frustrating. It was a year of us kind of talking about it um, because of my dad and his experience with medical marijuana and we thought this could really benefit Larry. So finally, when he did try it on camera, the results sort of spoke for themselves. It blew everyone away behind the camera and Larry himself and Betty and it, you know, I think it was a true conversion moment. We were surprised to find out um, that medical marijuana relieved those symptoms very substantially and allowed him to live a comfortable life. Michael Gary, 30 seconds on a medical marijuana ordinance. I, I hope everyone has a chance to see the documentary uh, Ride with Larry because you really can see that there is a legitimate need for people that have these very near-death type diseases. I, as a former federal prosecutor and the former chief law enforcement officer for the city, We'll work with the prosecutors to make sure that we get them on board and something that they can live with. But we need to do it expeditiously. We need to remember people are suffering. This is a legitimate issue. You know, people that got diagnosed with Parkinson's just gave up, sat, sat in a wheelchair and refused to get up. I'll never give up. But someday this will, this will probably take me, but I'm, never, I'm not going to walk, walk away from life. When I saw uh, Larry try medical marijuana for the first time, and that was um, actually the, t the time that it was filmed, um, I, was, I was sitting behind the camera and watching, watching him try it. And when I saw that smile that he had uh, after he sat back up, uh, you know, a few minutes after it, uh, it, it, it began to work, uh, I, I, you know, I just got this warm feeling all over because it was a, 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 a face, facial expression I had not seen in a long time. Uh. <laughs> and I remember uh, some of the early things that we discussed was that, you know, Larry had, wasn't able to, you know, control or to be able to smile and control his facial movements and also a lot of other parts of his body. But I think that was one of the biggest things that stuck out to me when when he came in to see me was that he was, you know, not able to control his facial movements and you know, not able to talk on the phone or, or eat food or, you know, just the quality of life that he was having with the dyskinesia was, was you know, was, was bad. Jim had this great space and he was really doing a lot, not just selling cannabis, but trying to create products that would really help what's going on. Like, tell me what's happening when you take this one. Like, okay, I took this and it helped me sleep, but it didn't help me with the pain and the stiffness that came with Parkinson's. You know, we started just, you know, become really good friends and talking and he was trying to, to learn how to medicate himself. You know, he was doing all the research that he needed to do to try to, you know, utilize cannabis the best that he could. So seeing Larry take my my oil and, you know, the the dyskinesia stop, I was just in tears and just very proud that, you know, we're able to be out here and, and help people. You know, when I when I got into this and I see my sister suffering and not being able to have access to cannabis, you know, my my one mission is to was to help was to help people get access. So to see that was just amazing for me. I truly think Larry and my dad created a movement. I mean, I think that's open to interpretation, but I personally believe that it was my dad and Larry that started a movement with, with acceptance for cannabis. In 2020, the voters of South Dakota spoke up and approved medical cannabis. 
One of my jobs as governor is to make sure that the will of the people and all constitutional laws are enforced. Voters went to the polls last November. They approved initiated measure 26 by a vote of 70% to 30%. That legalized medical marijuana here in the state. Voters also approved constitutional amendment A, which legalized recreational marijuana. That one by a 54% to 46% vote. One of my favorite things about, about Lou Rubin was is that once he got that relief that he was looking for, he started advocating out to everybody that he knew. Whether it was Parkinson's or pain or, or whatever it was, he was a big advocate of, of cannabis. I think that there is a long ways to go in terms of making it go from you know, a, a statewide public policy accepting it and patients being able to come in and now it's a matter of being able to have patient education. So I think if Larry were here today, he would be delighted at what's happened in uh, the last year or so. And I think he would be deeply delighted um, that last November, um, the citizens of South Dakota voted for medical marijuana at 70%. And I think he would have been thrilled that our little county, Clay County, South Dakota, 79% uh, of the voters voted yes to medical marijuana. And um, I, I like to think uh, that Larry had a lot to do with that. And, um, you know, I, I, I think if he were, if he were here today, he would, he would feel pretty good about that.